Hey guys and welcome to a bit of an update on my jumping spiders. We're going to talk about how I managed to get Bertie to eat because he got really skinny. I will also give you an update on Betty and currently I don't know if you can see him just up here Bertie is molting and this will be his first molt with us so by the end of this video hopefully he'll be out of his molt and we can reveal what he looks like now which will probably just be a bit bigger. So Bertie, when he came to me, he had eaten either a blue or green bottle fly when he was being packed to come to me. So when he arrived and he didn't initially eat, I wasn't overly concerned because I'm like, he's had a big meal. I mean, he was only um, a very tiny spider. Um, I also found, and I don't know if there is a difference between males and females, but I did find him harder to handle than Betty at this size. He was just a bit quicker and because he's black and a lot of the furnishings in the reptile room are black, it was kind of terrifying if he jumped off because I'm like, oh my God, where's he gone? Um, but yeah, he was very small, but he had just eaten, so I wasn't too concerned when he didn't initially eat. But as time went on, he just kept getting skinnier. He was refusing everything I offered him. So I had bought, before I knew he was on blue bottle flies, I had bought a fruit fly uh, culture, and I thought these are gonna be too small for him now, but I still offered him them. He didn't eat them. I offered him very small mealworms, like freshly molted tiny mealworms, uh, tiny crickets, pre-dead crickets where the like juices are coming out a bit, uh, mealworm pupa, waxworm pupa, but he was not interested. And we did this photo shoot for a cloud ledge that we bought out for jumping spiders on our Etsy shop, link in the description below. Uh, <laughs> And you can see he looks really skinny. So I was really concerned and I did reach out to Spoodiness, which is where I bought him from. And she sort of suggested taking a few steps back, putting him into his cup enclosure or a smaller enclosure, something really simple, put under the light and just him and food. So I did this, I put him back in the cup enclosure, which is just him, a fake plant and the food. I was putting fruit fly in there and after a day, you would find them dead on the floor and I don't know if they just died or he ate them because obviously when a spider eats a cricket you can see that that body's deflated, they've sort of sucked everything out of it. With fruit flies, I mean they're tiny anyway. So I don't know if he was really eating them or they were just dying but he didn't look any bigger. So after sort of trying everything, leaving an insect in there, removing it obviously if he didn't eat it and he was sort of like living on the roof of this cup like he was staying away from all food one evening I tried a waxworm pupa again and for some reason he just latched onto it and I was so relieved now unfortunately he latched onto it on the lid of the cup and this was like midnight and I was like well I can't like put the lid back on because he hasn't really attached himself to it very well the food so as soon as I put this lid on he's going to drop the food and you know I don't want him to go off of his food he needs to eat it so I sat there for about 20 minutes watching him and I thought I need to go to bed <laughs> So I put the lid of the cup in his original enclosure because obviously I sized down from that original enclosure to the cup enclosure and let him finish the wax on pupa and by the next day his big boy butt had come in so he was looking so much healthier um, and it wasn't long until he has you know gone where he's gone now and molted. Now he's in the process of molting at the moment but it's really encouraging because it was a bit touch and go for a moment. I mean, I feel like Betty molted quite early on, like she ate straight away, she molted. And it could partly be because when I got her, it was sort of, I believe more like summertime and the temperature obviously has an impact on their growth rate and everything. So it could be that. But um, as I said, at the end of this video, we will see how Bertie is after his molt. 
as for Betty, she is doing amazing. She is looking massive right now. So I, the funny thing is I made her this feeding platform in her enclosure. Once again, we sell it on our shop. And um, what's happened over time is she realizes I put food there. And when she's hungry, she waits above that feeding platform for food. So it's actually quite an, a good indicator for me when she's hungry. But the most bizarre thing is when she looks massive and you're like, surely you're not still hungry and you put food in and she eats more and i believe jumping spiders don't overeat i think someone said i think tarantulas can be known for that what i think might be happening is possibly she'll be laying eggs soon um so i think that's why she's looking extra massive at the moment it's really interesting what I've observed with jumping spiders as they start off with these like big eyes and big heads and end up with these big butts and tiny heads. But um, yeah, overall she's doing amazing. I think her colors on her butt may have faded a little bit. They're not looking as saturated. And I don't know if that's just because her abdomen is so expanded. Um, but yeah, she's doing really well. So I'm happy about that. One question I did have when I first got Bertie was whether or not I should put a divider between Bertie and Betty because obviously jumping spiders have great eyesight and they'll be able to see each other but they can't get to each other and how would this impact their behaviour um, and that's one of the, the things I thought maybe Bertie's feeling intimidated and didn't want to eat um, but I think they've kind of got used to each other but if you still think I should put a divider between both of them let me know obviously I'm always open to tips I'm still learning about jumping spiders as I go um, but I know some people will have like all their jumping spiders up against each other and don't seem to have a problem so I don't know. So Bertie has successfully molted unfortunately he has come out super skinny he didn't want to eat during that two weeks or so he was in his little molting hammock um but luckily oh my god you look evil wait a minute look at me oh no you look cute luckily i've been able to get some blue or green bottle flies i think they're also known as caster flies um so once we get one to hatch i will definitely offer it to bertie my plan is to put a pupa in the tank and in sort of room temperature it's a little bit warmer here in the reptile room hopefully it will hatch soon and as soon as that fly comes out he can hopefully grab it um, and if he does if he is successful and he eats it I'll probably upload it as a short or something uh, but I really hope he stays up with his eating because as you can see he is skinny again and um, I just I don't get the difference between him and Betty I don't know if anyone else has noticed a difference between male or female spiders why he's just so reluctant to eat but hopefully the uh, flies change his mind Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little update. Thank you for watching and goodbye.